Welcome back to another beautiful episode on FTB Infinity Expert Mode. Thank you so much for again the support and I'm sorry I'm away. I hope to keep up with the comments as much as I possibly can when I get onto Wi-Fi and all that kind of stuff. As you can see, we got seven buckets of rocket fuel out of that. Not bad and we still have some resources except for in here. But that's okay. We're pretty much out of hooch in here. We have 250 left. So not a bad conversion rate. We just have to get more water. It does go through the water pretty darn quick. So that's a thing. You know what? That witch right there. Hold on. Let's get a safari net here. I want to capture it. I want to capture that witch. Yep. You know why? Because there is seems to be a ton of need for glowstone, redstone, and all that kind of stuff. So, this witch might come in very handy pretty darn soon. But we might have to upgrade our power and stuff first. So, a decent amount of rocket fuel overall. But like I said last episode, I want to get to automating a few different things in the world. And one of them is, we're pretty much out of cobblestone. Um, so, cobblestone is really not hard to automate. By theory, I could even automate it with this guy, the Igneous Extruder. It doesn't use up any lava or water, so I could definitely do that. But, I think there's a much easier way to do it. And it's a little bit faster as well, in my opinion. I don't know if it's always faster, but it is in my opinion. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to place down some lava, just like so. I'm going to cover that up because we do have a lot of wood around here and I do not want it to burn. Um, and then we need a bucket of water, so let's get that. I usually run two buckets. I don't know why I'm rocking the one bucket, but we are. Um, and this guy is going to go on the other side. And what this is going to do is it's going to create basically a cobble gen. Or an example of a cobble gen, I should say. So, that'll be like that. And then, we will connect in to the back side of this right here. Just like that. So, we have the transfer node items right there. Ready to go. It's on a piece of cobble. Now, the only other thing that we require is, uh, I'm just going to make that cobble just to be safe. And we can still access that, so that's good. Okay, so the only other thing that we need is a world interaction upgrade. And what this will do, we need two of them overall. So let's get these guys going. It's blue on the corners, yes. Okay, like so. And that goes in the middle with the iron all around. Okay, one and two. They're a little bit expensive, don't get me wrong, but they're very, very useful in that as I add this, you can see that it's already gathering cobblestone. Very nice, right? And that cobblestone should be automatically going into this drawer right here for 20, and we're getting higher and higher. Okay. Now, I also made a liquid transfer node, which is not overly difficult at all. A little bit of redstone and lapis and iron and whatnot, but pretty easy. And one of the things that I wanted to try, and I haven't, haven't tried this yet, with these tanks, or these, uh, what do they call them? Barrels or whatever from Pam's Harvest Craft. So I'm not sure if this actually will work just without the world upgrade or not so let's give it a try um let's remove you and let's just remove you for right now as well so if i put that down there does this automatically pull water of course it doesn't now if i do a world interaction upgrade does it pull it it does not okay okay noted perfect okay this is good information to have and good information to know. I mean, these guys are quite nice the uh, because they're basically an infinite water source that you can pull from. But that means that we're going to have to come up with some sort of way to get water over here and an infinite water spring. Uh, so let's do a little bit of you know, fandangling here. Uh, let's get two stone should do the job. And we might need 
a little yeah you know what that might do the job for us it's not gonna look perfect and we might have to come up with a better solution for this area but for now it will work so let's get our bucket boom we'll make an infinite source just like so and now we can place our liquid transfer no 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 okay uh let's just do this boom boom and boom okay so it's not pulling the water yet but as we add the world interaction it'll start pulling water into the tank so now basically we have unlimited water going into our vat to make hooch as long as we have the resources in there very nice right pretty straightforward pretty simple setup uh, like I said, not perfectly ideal because I didn't really want to have water in the middle of the room. So we'll probably rearrange or move that. I might even hide it if we can automate it. Um, <coughs> but we should be making more hooch and it should automatically going into this vat and any extras into the tank. So overall, things are going quite well. Um, down here, we should have pretty much as much rocket fuel as we require going forward now it is nighttime so let's just sleep off that and from there so we have automated cobble now that's good we have automated a couple other things as well I'm, I'm really happy with where we're at right now we do have the plastic sheets now as well and what I'm thinking we're going to get into is probably hmm that is a great question actually let's get into you know i'm kind of rethinking the idea on the quarry we could always go with an excavator um, from immersive engineering uh where is that book right here uh, so the immersive engineering tools and machinery, the excavator, it requires a lot of stuff. And it also requires 4,096 RF per tick. Um, so it is pretty good, but it does require a lot of stuff. Now, by theory, we could get into the diesel generator, which isn't too, too bad, but you do have to get all the stuff to make biodiesel and biodiesel is not the easiest thing to make um, if I remember correctly you need the industrial squeezer and the fermenter which again requires even more stuff and then you need the seeds industrial hemp not that difficult to make and you probably want to do like a sugarcane farm or maybe you could do a potato farm and the poisonous potatoes could become the other thing and sugarcane farm as well. Uh, that might be a cool little thing to do. Hmm. Do we really want to do biodiesel? I don't know. I'm a little torn. Let me think about this for a sec. All right, so I want to try something, and I don't know if it's been nerfed or not, but there's a little trick that I've been thinking of for quite some time. Plastic sheets are not easy to make because they require the rocket fuel and whatnot. Now, rocket fuel really isn't that difficult to make, but I've really wanted to always try and see if they change this or not. Um, so we're going to make out of the first item with mine factory reloaded a fisher okay so now what a fisher does is a fisher basically has a chance of pulling up fish pretty straightforward right um it does require rf to work but it has a chance or it used to have a chance anyways of pulling up uh plastic sheets so i kind of want to experiment with this guy and see if it is still able to do that or not now where can i pull in power from um not really the best places is there hmm um maybe we just do it upstairs you know what let's do that actually 
you know what could be fun? Just even having it pretty much up there. Um, I really want to try this. Okay, let's try it. Let's give it a try. Uh, it's just going to be a temporary little setup anyways uh, if it doesn't work. So I'm going to set this guy up, and we'll see. Maybe it'll, uh, maybe it'll do what we need it to do. All right, so set up a little three by three pond and we're gonna throw down the fisher. Again, kind of a temporary little location and everything, but we will just connect it to say this power line right here, just like so. That should give it power and energy and it should work. Now, uh, oh, we also need a output chest, of course. So let's grab that quickly here. Just any little old chest should do the job, and we'll see what we get from this thing over time. Uh, like I said, we have the ability to make more plastic sheets and stuff now anyways, so I'm not going to be too, too worried. Uh, let's see. So it does take a long time to work, and it is going to take a decent amount of energy. But our water wheel should be generating enough to compensate for it. So we're going to find out... In a bit of time, we'll double check on that at the end of this episode and see exactly what we end up with. In the meantime, I am going to make a little bit more of the plastic sheets and all that kind of stuff and get a few more things up and running. I would really like to get like a tree farm going. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do. And I think I'm going to use Mine Factory Reloaded for it. So let's get some of this stuff prepped and ready to go for us to build those items. So we're going to need a planter. Pretty straightforward. Another machine frame and all that kind of stuff. And we're also going to need a harvester. Again, not overly difficult, but it is another machine frame. So I got to get all my stuff together for two more machine frames. Oh boy. All right, so we're back and ignore the uh, snowblower. I can't tell if you can hear it outside or not, but uh, they're doing work, which is good. So the planter, yes, indeed, we've got it. Beautiful. I'm going to build it. Uh, the next one is the harvester that we need. And this guy's going to require a couple invar axes and some shears. Uh, we should be able to do pretty much all of this. Uh-oh. Never mind, we don't have any invar. Dang. I am actually running quite low on the iron and such of the the world here. So, let's see. We need a little bit. And we can just throw these in our alloy smelter now, which makes it a little bit easier. There we go. That should be making up our invar. And we have our other machine frame here done. Look at that. We got... 8,000, 16,000 buckets of hooch. Very nice, very nice. Okay, did I not grab three? Anyways, it's fine. Uh, we have enough. So, we need a couple of axes, and this should be done. One, bam. Beautiful. Good stuff. Okay, that, that, and the machine frame will give us our harvester as well. Okay, good stuff. Very excited about all of that. I'm actually just going to put that book in here along with the engineer's hammer, I think. And I got to start kind of fine-tuning some of this stuff. We don't need the bed anymore uh, until we actually find a place to put it and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, oh boy, it's nighttime. All right, let's take a quick little snooze in the old sleeping bag. Probably the best way to do things, I think. And we need to come up with a solution for a tree farm and exactly where we're going to put it. I think our initial placement is going to be somewhat temporary. Um, and we might just put it down here temporarily. Or, you know what, all of our power is on this side. So maybe we will put it over here instead. Um, that might be a little bit easier, but a little bit more dangerous, too, with the mobs. There's always lots of mobs over here. So maybe we'll put it somewhere in this general vicinity. I'll clear out a little area anyways. We got the uh, lumber axe, and we will get to work on that. So 
I've cleared out a decent amount of land, kind of fixed some of the uh, creeper explosions that have happened and whatnot in the area. Just kind of spruced it up a little bit. Nothing too crazy, though. And I placed down our planter right here with a decent amount of space all around it. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is exactly where I want to pull the power from. And because we're kind of limited by the 16 block range that these guys do, I'm thinking we're going to come right down this mountain. Just like so. And maybe we can connect this. No, we cannot. Okay. Probably because of this block. Let's see. Boom and boom. Nope, still can't. Okay. Yeah, we might need to get some mounts and stuff, but maybe not. Maybe this will work right here. Nah, ah, beautiful. Beautiful. How is that not obstructed? It's going right through that block, I tell you. All right. So, and then we'll just kind of keep pulling it down the hill here, I'm thinking. And, and then eventually bring it on over to the pulverizer. So, let's just place it down on the ground because that's where power lines go, people. Didn't you know? Um, perfect. Okay. So now we are, you know what, I actually do not like that. Let's go like this and like this, and will this connect? Yes, it will. Okay, good. That way we can go down with it, straight down, which is exactly what we're going to do. Because this needs to connect to the planter underneath the ground. So let's start digging that up. And we're going to try to do this as best that we can anyways. Uh, with the technology that we have there we go beautiful okay so we can do a straight shot straight across with our connectors just like that and oh dang i'm short a connector okay but either way we can run the power straight into the planter that's very good um, i might actually go with an extra electrum wire because i think our harvester is going to be right about here if I'm not mistaken. So we'll put that guy down just like that. And let's just kind of clear a little bit of room for it so that we have access points all the way around and make it somewhat decently pretty. Um, before mobs spawn, let's take a quick little sleep in the sleeping bag. But basically the next step is to make sure that our planter saplings come out of the harvester and get back into the planter. So we're going to need some sort of transport system. And I think we're just going to use the extra utilities uh, setup because it is quite a bit cheaper, actually. So let's do that. And I do have a transfer node right here. And we already have some of the piping as well right there. Beautiful. And I believe I even have a filter because this was what I was originally going to use for the setup. So that's good. So we can filter this. And I've decided that I'm going to do rubber saplings, okay? So this farm is going to be fully on rubber saplings. So this filter will be rubber saplings. We're going to need the filter pipes as well. <clears throat> very, very important. Oh, man. <clears throat> Apparently, breathing stopped for me. That's fine. No big deal. All right, so we have that. That's good. We can now um, get some of the items that we need to. <clears throat> oh, my. I can't believe my voice at the moment. It's fine. Okay, so one of the things that we need or that we want to get is an upgrade to this thing. They're not very expensive, and I'm going to go with silver. Uh, gold's really cheap, too. Quartz is really cheap. I mean, by theory, until you get into the diamonds and emeralds and everything, they're all pretty cheap. But I'm just going to go with a silver upgrade for right now. We're going to need some raw plastic, some redstone, one, two, three, four, some gold nuggets, and... Oh, we have just enough. Oh, I was a little concerned I'd have to chop down a tree. But I think we are perfect. And we are. Good stuff. So we're going to get a quick silver upgrade times two. Because you need one for the planter to increase its range. As well as the harvester. Beautiful. We're going to change consume stack to being off. Because we don't want that to be a thing. We're going to put the upgrade in there, and all of this is no and no. Very good. Okay, I'm going to get some power and stuff and run some cabling, and I'll 
we'll uh, check on the status. All right, so here we go. The planter is set. I got the harvester in place, and I've ran our transfer nodes. Now, one of the interesting things about the immerse immersive engineering wire is or coil i should say is you can kind of place blocks over it so you know you can definitely hide it completely uh so it still works quite nicely but i also do enjoy the look of it right it kind of looks pretty cool in my opinion uh, but as you can see it's placed out all of the rubber and i set up this transfer node with a filtered pipe to run all the rubber saplings down through the pipe and over into the planter okay you can see that right there pretty straightforward nothing too crazy about that now we're also going to get two other drops from this and what we're going to use for that is we're gonna get away from the drawers here but we're gonna get rubber wood and raw rubber from this okay both very useful useful drops the rubber wood can obviously be used like anything we can smelt it into charcoal we can use it as fuel or we can actually put it in an extractor and get even more rubber i think for the most part though i'm going to use this for charcoal because because why not right coal's a pain in the butt to farm and if we can get some automated charcoal that would be very nice in my opinion so what i want to do though is i want to make a very nice block and it's called a cache okay Caches are kind of like a barrel, kind of like a spruce drawer, all that kind of stuff, and they have a set capacity. So, as you can see, the resonant cache, for example, has 640,000 units of capacity. A reinforced cache, 160,000. That's a lot of stuff. 40,000, for example. We have 100 right now. So, for example, a hardened cache, these are not difficult to make at all. A little bit of tin and a little bit of invar and we are good to go. Now, I am short on the invar. Uh, let's do that. Uh, boom. Let's get that many. Yeah, we'll, get, we'll ramp up a little bit of invar here because I'm sure we'll need it. There we go. That should start producing for us. Come on. There we go. That's more than enough already. So let's get our invar, let's get our tin, and I wonder if it works with rubber wood. That is a great question. It does not, shucks. Okay, <laughs> we'll just use the old spruce. No big deal there. Uh, da -da -da -da. That's the wrong crafting table. There it is. Okay, so that gives us our cash, and then we can harden it like so. 40,000, like I said, pretty darn solid right i would say so so let's get one more because of course there's two drops from this like i said previously we get the invar here and we'll get this cash very cheap too like in terms of cost to get forty thousand capacity this is probably one of the cheaper options okay so here we are down here so this one first we'll put down there and we'll set this guy to rubber wood and can I turn it? Mm, can I? No, not really, hey? No, yeah, that's a shame. Okay. Um, you know what? It's fine. It's not that big of a deal. I can hop on down here just to view it and whatnot. And then this guy will be the raw rubber. So... By theory, it should find these even without filters. So let's turn this on and see what happens. It should start to harvest all of this stuff, and then it should start to deposit it. And it's doing just that. Very good. Now, there's the next problem. Sludge. Yes, indeed. We have sludge coming in. Now, there's two ways that you can really get rid of sludge. One of the easiest ways is to just get a void, uh, this guy here, void transport pipe from Buildcraft. It's just ink, glass, and redstone. And then you can turn that with some pipe sealant into a fluid one, and it'll just destroy all of your fluids. That's all I'm going to do right now. Uh, next episode, we will probably get into... Um, 
a, a situation where we actually get to use the sludge. And that would be a nice goal. Um, I have some cactus greens, which we can turn into pipe sealant, which we can turn like so. Very good. So now all I'm going to do is attach this directly to that harvester and it'll automatically get rid of the sludge. We got a skeleton over here that's trying to cause nothing but trouble. So I just do this and all the sludge is gone. Now the reason we want to at least get rid of the sludge is sludge will actually slow down your machine so it won't chop and won't work as effectively. Okay, so you definitely want to at least get rid of it, but it actually has a great use as well. And we will definitely be using sludge going forward. So sludge in a sludge boiler, which is something I'd love to get here, has a chance to get us sand, has a chance to get us dirt, coarse dirt, clay, which is a great drop, regular dirt, gravel, red sand, soul sand, so basically all of the simple materials, nether rack, heat sand, and tainted soil, which is pretty awesome for a return, in my opinion, for something that's just a byproduct of something even better, like tree farms and other things. So I think it's a great idea, and it should help us out quite a bit. Now, I haven't been AFK or anything like that too long this episode, but I wanted to get the tree farm done. So now that it's done, let's head on upstairs and take a look to see if, and it's a big if, <clears throat> if we've gotten anything from our fisher. Uh, let's just put that in there for right now. Let's head on all the way up. There we go, to our little fisher here, and see what we have. We have a whole bunch of fish, is what we got, and a saddle. Holy crikey at all the fish. Wow, tripwire hook, very nice, very nice. I haven't seen any plastic sheets yet, though. So that is interesting, but holy cow at all the different types of fish that you get. Wow, I bet you that these can all be used for lots of cool things like a fish sandwich and sushi. Love it. So anyways, I'm going to keep this going. Why not? We're almost at another tick and see what we get. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope you guys like the tree farm that we have set up. We basically have unlimited plastic now, which is great. Um, I may switch up half of this to be spruce. Um, you know what? Let's do that anyways. Whoa, that little leg spike. I've been getting a few leg spikes as the world's been open here on my, uh, day of recording, but it's been open for quite some time, so that's probably understandable. Um, I might need to do a quick little, little refresh. Anyways, that is going to be it for me. Uh, that's... There it is. Found it. <laughs> and away we go. So... That is basically her. We got the filter. We got everything good to go there. It's working nicely. Okay, very good. And have yourselves a fantastic day. Bye-bye.